For those who don't know what HDR is, it's a mod where it adds wave dashing, dash dancing, and many more advanced techniques that were foreign to Smash Ultimate's engine. It's pretty much a spiritual successor to Project Dem, as even plenty of Project Dem's iconic iterations of their characters are actually in this mod. Characters move so fast on the ground in this game in combination with Smash Ultimate's natural speed, if you were to throw wave dashing and dash dancing on top of this without editing the character's speed, they'd be too fast. Although it should be noted that a lot of characters had their overall speed decreased, along with nerfs to the recovery to almost the whole cap. It's really cool that every single character just moves much better in this game. If you like melee mechanics and Smash Ultimate, HDR has you covered. A quick disclaimer is I'm going to go over major changes for every single character in the whole cast. There's not any new characters, but there's changes to every single character from Smash Ultimate's roster, so I'm going to be condensing them in a bite-sized, honest content format just for you guys over the holidays. Hopefully you guys are staying warm, that's why that's why I got a sweater on. Think of it as a holiday gift to you. The major thing I want to say is HDR is constantly being updated literally all the time. It's very likely that anything in this video could be removed or changed and it could become outdated. So this is a look at the current version of HDR's roster. There's some characters that I know from talking to the devs are going to get completely changed and further updates. Also, it should be noted some characters don't have a lot to say about them while others are going to have almost their entire movesets changed. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, strap in, enjoy. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Subscribe or something. The juiciest thing that Mario got is actually something that Luigi and Dr. Mario both share. They have brand new neutral B attacks. Now what does that mean? Well, they obviously still have their fireball attacks. No duh. If you're mad that Mario doesn't have enough KO power, this move should have you covered. It's Mario's Firebrand attack, which is a reference to the Mario Luigi RPG games, and the move is extremely strong if you hit up close with it. It is a actually very deadly KO move. Mario's got more quality of life changes like particle effects, so things like forward air actually look incredible with this brand new Fire Streak animation. This is actually something that Project M has started, so it's nice to see it translated over to Mario in HDR. Donkey Kong has some pretty insane changes I've never seen a mod do this, but he can grab opponents in the air. Yes, yes, yes. I cannot believe it. He has an aerial down special. They replaced the old aerial down special with one that allows DK to cargo opponents in the sky and allow them to combo confirm with it. If you're a fan of Brawl Minus as well, this might be a little familiar to you as... Donkey Kong has a projectile now. What does the world come to? If you hold shield and then press B, DK will pull out a barrel item that he can throw at the opponent. You can only use one barrel at a time, so there's a little bit of startup, but it's a solid option for DK when it comes to dealing with campers. Dash attack now falls off ledges, and this is similar to Project Dem. He also just feels a lot better speed-wise, closer to the Project Dem version, and that is one of my favorite versions of Donkey Kong ever, so I love that version. Link in the current build is mostly the same from the ultimate version of the character, although he does feel a little bit faster, not as slow paced as he did previously. Look how fast his down air is in this game. They did nerf his up special recovery utility a little bit, but this is pretty common in HDR's cast to have recovery nerfs. If you liked the ultimate version of Link, he's mostly intact. I've heard rumors though that the devs want to change him further potentially give him a brand new moveset. We'll see what they do in the future. Samus has her melee nair, so the sex kick is back. It's a solid combo tool and it's good for edge guarding just like it is in melee. Up smash is also completely different, now being a solid tool, especially for platform follow-ups. I actually like this animation change as it gives Samus some more differences compared to Dark Samus. Some other things that I notice is up here is actually a KO tool off the top, which is rather nice. Dash attack is a super strong combo tool. You can literally link dash attack into dash attack and then just fare somebody off stage and it can KO as low as 70%. I don't know if they're gonna backport some of the Project Dem moveset, but maybe they will. It would be really nice to see if the Ice moveset would ever return. But right now, she mostly resembles Ultimate Samus. Dark Samus is actually quite a bit different with all these changes. Dark Samus is gonna get changed further in the future. She has a Peach Float, which is something that Mewtwo actually received in Project Dem. And I love when characters get Peach Floats. It's a really cool idea. Dark Samus also has a brand new Nair. 
It's kind of similar to Mewtwo's animation. Fair was changed to a swipe attack, and it also seems like a decent combo tool. Up air is a overhead attack. It's a very solid tool for low percent combos. Down special, you can use it as a combo tool as the move also bounces much higher in the air and it doesn't have the same recovery utility. Down smash is a very powerful tool now with high amounts of range. This is possibly one of my favorite changes to the character overall, as this move is completely unique to Dark Samus. Dark Samus's charge shot now goes much slower, however, it is actually a pretty good tool now because you can combo with it because it's slower. So you can maybe throw opponents into it. It actually reminds me a lot of Project M Lucario's Aura Bomb, which, gee, I wonder if this is foreshadowing in some sort of way. Uh, stay tuned. Dark Samus's side special is essentially a middle ground of what her two options were in Smash Ultimate, except now she only has one variance. In a way, it both homes and charges at the opponent, but it's a little bit weaker than the charging missile. Yoshi's egg goes much further in the air, and you can actually use multiple eggs after one after another, so there isn't a lot of cooldown when you're using this move. You can escape out of side special faster, which is a neat change. In general, Yoshi feels more faster paced with less end lag on a lot of Yoshi's moves. Overall, this version of Yoshi is not that much different from the ultimate version. Kirby's changes were mostly quality of life changes, dash attack falls off ledges. This is straight from Project M, I love this kind of stuff. And this isn't the only move in the game that actually does this now, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. His aerials have less end lag, like down air for example can be stringed consistently. Some Project M combos make a return like down throw into forward smash. Although the Project Plus slide down special is not in HDR, or at least at the moment, Maybe they will add it in the future, I actually like that tool in P+. Kirby is mostly a faster paced version of the ultimate version of Kirby. Considering this is a mod where we're adding back melee style characters, Melee Fox is back. He still has some ultimate style moves like his forward air, which is definitely the much better move compared to the melee iteration. So you can actually do drag down combos, but also with his melee inspired moveset, it's actually really neat. His recovery is technically nerfed as he can't do side special into up special anymore. This is like the melee version. However, he can shorten his side special again, which is actually cool. It's back. Although side special, maybe it's just me, it seems like it has a lot more lag when Fox is returning on stage, so you can definitely get punished while using it. HDR's recovery changes in a nutshell make a lot of recoveries weaker, so you can expect a lot more nerfs like this. If you like Melee Fox, though, you're gonna be at home here because this is basically Melee Fox. Pikachu's quick attack distance was definitely toned down, and this is for sure a huge recovery nerf. Although Pikachu still has a solid recovery, side special for example. Back air is actually the Smash 64 version of back air. This is another PM inspired change. Smash Ultimate's back air drag down combos are not necessarily here. However, this move is actually a solid edge guarding tool now, just like it was in 64 and PM. Up air was changed to resemble the melee version of this move. Other than that, most of the changes Pikachu got were to actually make him resemble the ultimate version of the character. So it's just mixing some newer elements to that ultimate style version of the character. Luigi is in line with his brother. He has a brand new neutral B attack where you hold down the input, you get Luigi's Thunderbrand attack. It's a pretty solid tool for combo confirming because it has very low knockback and it pops the opponents up just in front of Luigi so he can hit them. Since wave dashing and dash dancing return, of course Luigi has his iconic wave dash. Although his run speed was toned down because it was actually pretty fast in Smash Ultimate, his grab range was also toned down, now being a rather weak grab distance-wise. I still think Luigi has pretty good combos out of grab, it's just they're toned down and he can't really use his tether grab as aggressively like he could in Ultimate. Ness was made to be pretty similar to the Project Plus version of the character, so that means he has a smaller magnet. He does still have Ultimate Ness stuff, like the up air being pretty much intact. It seems to be a low percent combo tool. I don't mean to sound like a little bit of a snob, but Project M Ness is a character that I put thousands upon thousands of hours in. He does seem like he's trying to be this version of Ness, but I just feel like he's slightly off currently in this build. Let me cook. I feel like Up Smash could actually be a lot faster. It's not really supposed to be a strong smash attack even in Project M. It was mostly a fast combo tool. It feels a lot slower than usual, and Down Smash's distance isn't really close to the Project M version of the move. It's definitely toned down. I don't know if this 
this was done intentionally. I also think Down Tilt doesn't resemble the Project M version. The PM version is a very solid tool. It has a tiny hitbox. It can be mashed very quickly to allow Ness to combo out of it. This version I think needs to be tweaked up a little bit. It just sends opponents away too easily and a magnet also feels slightly off utility wise. I feel like opponents fall out of the move way too quickly, making it have less combo utility. But again, that's just me nerding out a little bit. But I'm only just saying that because I'm a huge nerd for Project M Ness. Hopefully he'll get changed in the future. It'd be nice to see. Some people are predicting he's actually a low tier right now. Uh, so, oh well. History repeats itself, I guess. Not trying to dunk on the devs in any way, because I know this is a labor of love, but that's just my two cents on where Ness is right now, as someone who's played way too much Project M Ness. Similar to Fox being changed to the Melee version, Melee Captain Falcon is back, and my god, does he feel so good. His aerials are really fast in this version of the character. So you can do all those iconic melee-esque combos. They're back in full force. Stomp me, stomp me, stomp anything. Up special doesn't grab ledge as easily, so this is one of those HDR recovery nerfs. Grabbing ledge is a little bit harder. Up air isn't really a ladder combo tool. This is similar to the melee version. Up tilt no longer spikes aerial opponents. Although side special and down special resemble the ultimate version of Captain Falcon in utility, if you've seen my video on Captain Falcon, you would know that these tools are actually really good at ultimate, so this is a great buff for him. I think in combination with Falcon's melee moveset and giving him some of his better ultimate tools, this is actually going to make a really good version of the character. Many people are predicting he's potentially a top tier because of this. Jigglypuff, unsurprisingly, was changed to be more similar to the melee version, so the character has a lot higher aerial drift. There still is some ultimate puff stuff there, like for example, up throw resembles the ultimate version, it's not really like the melee version. I feel like it's a little tricky to a combo with it. However, things like Rest got a major buff. The hitbox size is much larger, and the move comes out on frame 3, which is a major buff, so it actually resembles the Melee in 64 versions of Rest. And then it also resembles the ultimate version of Rest in Power, so it's actually an interesting change. Peach in the current build is most identical to the ultimate version. I was expecting Melee Peach stuff to possibly be on her character, but it's not the case. If you like Ultimate Peach though, pretty much everything is here, her up air combos, her float combos. So since it's Ultimate Peach, she's still a very fast paced combo centric character. One of the small changes that Peach got was turnips actually have color changes, try to make them more visually distinct. Her forward smash can also be actually activated depending on where you tilt the control stick. This is actually a really nice change. It's like a little quality of life buff for the character so you can actually control which version of forward smash comes out. Daisy mostly got quality of life changes, but according to some of the devs, she actually is going to get a reworking. I personally think it would be an opportunity to just throw melee peach stuff at the character and call it a day, but that's just me with my bias. I have no soul and I like to spam peach down smash. I'm proud of it. Peach's turnip color changes and forward smash optimization are also on Daisy. And she also has three jumps in total, which is a very cool change. They traded this by making her float much shorter and being nerfed in utility. So it, yeah, kind of a hard nerf to float. If you <laughs> Although Daisy didn't get a lot of changes, I, I do like the fact she has three jumps now. Bowser actually got quite a bit of changes. First off, he still has fire breath, but he actually has a crazy buff, now having an actual projectile that's really good. Pretty much the Project Plus fireball is back in a way, which I personally love. It's not just a projectile that Bowser can just use willy-nilly, it takes 15 seconds to appear, where Bowser gets a very beefy projectile only for one use until it has to basically refuel it. After Bowser uses it, it has to recharge in order to come back. If Bowser loses a stock, the fireball is gone. His forward smash was changed completely, being a new attack that references the Mario and Luigi games, now being a punch. Down air is also a new attack, sort of being a remixed version of a melee-esque down air, except having way less end lag, so you can actually combo with it. Whereas in melee, if you were to do it, it was very laggy. <laughs> Some other incredible stuff being like Project M's ability to jump out of down special returns. This is an iconic Project M change returning. Love this too. His aerials in general are speedier and have much less end lag, so this is actually a very solid version of Bowser. I wouldn't be surprised if he got ranked higher than the ultimate version because he feels really good right now. Ice Climber's up air was changed to be a strong combo tool. The animation was actually changed as well, and the move is active for a very long period of time. 
They look very happy. Look at their facial expressions. Their down air allows you to bounce off the opponents and, and then you can also combo off of that. Their weight was nerfed similar to the Project Plus versions. Speaking of Project Plus, you can do PM style handoffs with forward air in this game. This is a really iconic PM combo for them, so Fair actually spikes off stage. Handoffs exist still, although a big change is that Nana can actually grab now, can actually begin handoffs. This is actually a major change. If Nana manages to grab the opponent, her throw input will be based on the stage position. Small changes like Hammer having a hitbox when Popo inputs neutral special was also changed. Nana can just die at the start of the match also if you want that. It's there. Rip Nana. Sheik is very similar to the ultimate version of the character still having bouncing fish and grenades for side special. However, grenade actually sends the opponents toward Sheik. They explode much faster and it makes them into a very consistent tool. Down air got a major change. The move no longer stall and falls. This time it's now can meteor. Just, just look how quick it is. Her needles have a higher amount of hit stun, similar to the melee version. Bouncing Fish receives some big end lag changes, while the move still maintains its strength. It's just a bit more riskier. Her smash attacks and aerials are mostly in line with the ultimate version of the character. Things like drag down up air and forward air being weaker, so don't expect a lot of melee stuff like the fair or down smash to return, as those would probably overcook her character, as a lot of people assume that she's actually a top tier in HDR as well. Zelda has pretty significant speed boosts across her entire moveset. Even her aerials have much less end lag, which is starting on the right track if you want to fix some of the more bigger problems for Zelda in her past versions. Phantom got major knockback buffs. As you can see right here, this move is crazy beefy. Neutral B sort of resembles the Project M version of the move, although it's not exactly the same, but the moves have similar utility. They can be controlled with extra mobility and the move will blow up after a long period of time. Her smash attacks are much faster and have better combo utility. Like for example, up smash and up air, which are strong combo confirms for her. Speaking of up air, the move is very very strong in HDR, having very little end lag compared to past versions of this move. Also just look at how beefy things like her down air are for example. It's a meteor smash now. She's a more technical and refined version of the character. Seems to be mostly buffed across the board. Similar to Mario and Luigi, Dr. Mario has a new neutral B attack, now being an ice brand attack, where if you hold down neutral B and get close to the Dr. Mario will freeze the opponent. It's actually a very nice change. I think Dr. Mario in HDR feels like a seriously major buffed version of the previous iteration of the character. He feels so good now. His moves have low end lag and it makes him feel very buttery smooth on stage. He also has electricity effects on a lot of his moves and his run speed and air speed were increased majorly. Even his recovery, which in HDR, it's pretty crazy that a recovery got buffed, but his is better. He has more range on moves like down smash. His aerials feel great. Pichu got some pretty major changes. What you'll notice right off the bat is Pichu has a brand new box near the HUD of the character. This is Pichu's brand new mechanic in this game, where if Pichu uses any moves that are electrical attack, they will gain Pichu's meter. When fully charged, Pichu will get stronger special moves that are brand new to his kit. Like for example, side special becoming a kill move for this version of neutral B. This new mechanic is called the charge state where Pichu in general still gains recoil from electric type attacks. Charge mechanic allows Pichu to be rewarded for it. Pichu was hit with a mix of buffs and nerfs. Moves like Nair have less range. Under sweet spot is harder to hit in HDR while forward smash gained more knockback growth and fair has less knockback growth making it a better combo tool. Falco in HDR is a mix between the melee version of the character and the ultimate version of Falco, sharing ultimates up smash, up tilt, and forward smash while having a melee nair, shine, and back air, and down air pillar combos returning. We're back in business, baby. Nah. <laughs> Although his old Smash Ultimate there was actually moved to his current forward air, similar to Fox, Falco has the melee style recovery where his side special into up special no longer works. However, Falco can shorten his side B. Marth resembles the melee version of the character now having his entire moveset from that game intact. He was given some quality of life changes like having colors on his side special to represent different versions of these moves. Marth's changes are rather minor. Most of his moves were given very small amount of tweaks. Lucina got some pretty massive changes, getting a new Nair that was straight from Fire Emblem Awakening. 
along with having a new side special where the regular two hit side special was changed to a three hit side special. She still shares a lot of the same moves that the character has from Marth, but she's a little bit more unique and has her own edge now. Lucina also has a new idol animation that I thought is worth noting as well. Young Link has a chance to pull a bomb shoe with his down special. His dash attack can also go off ledges now, and this is definitely a reference to Ocarina of Time, and allows you to do aerial combos off stage like this. His up smash has been changed to a double hit attack instead of it being a triple hit attack, and down air was buffed heavily as it now the late hit of the move is much faster. Its power was increased a lot too, as the late hit is actually a strong KO tool sort of like the melee version was. The move even has a pogo effect, but if Young Link lands on shield it will actually allow him to bounce off the opponent, and down throw can tech chase on spaces and combo on normal characters. Ganondorf has a lot of changes. First off, he has a brand new idol animation where he just stands there menacingly. He is all around just much faster than what he was before. Even his aerials and smash attacks come out a lot faster. I mean, this is just like the obvious buff to give to Ganondorf is make him faster, right? He has a brand new float attack that allows Ganondorf to float in the air and he can cancel the float into his aerials. This is very much inspired from Ocarina of Time and also Project Plus Ganondorf in a way. Although I like the HDR version more visually, it actually looks a lot cooler. It feels like a spiritual successor indeed. This is probably my favorite change to Ganondorf's whole character is Down Special's angle was changed to go directly below Ganondorf. This makes Wizard Foot into more of a combo tool. Up tilt, although this might be a controversial change, it was changed to a fast combo tilt instead of it being a KO move. Mewtwo was given many changes from Project Plus Mewtwo, like being able to float more specifically. Besides this change, Mewtwo mostly resembles the ultimate version of the character. Most of the changes Mewtwo received were relatively minor. Similar to Mario, the other FE sorties, Roy's side special has color coordination, and they also gave him a new down air which is supposed to have more combo utility. It still can do this at the ledge, and Roy's down throw angle was changed, giving it more combo potential. Roy's side special was given more recovery utility as it stalls in the air better, and Roy's down tilt reminds me a lot of the melee version of this move as it hits super vertically, just like in melee. They also added a lot more flame effects on his whole moveset. Krom's side Side special can actually cancel depending on the direction it's hit, meaning you can cancel side B down into down tilt or any other smash attack. The upward angle of side special 4 allows Kron to even jump so he can continue combos in the air, which is a neat concept for the character. Game & Watch was heavily changed, a lot of his Smash Ultimate animations being changed back to what they were from previous Smash games notably some of his aerials. Down air no longer stalls and falls. Chef got some minor angle changes and down throws angle was tweaked to benefit his combo utility. Meta Knight has some PM classics like back air. This banger has returned as it's a very strong KO tool for Meta Knight. Something completely unique to HDR is you can cancel side special into other moves in Meta Knight's kit. I really love this change. It allows Meta Knight to simply combo confirm with a previous really niche tool in the past. Also, by the way, he still has his ultimate up special and down special, which actually has a darkness effect on the move, which is kind of neat. It also can be activated by C-Stick, just like in Project Den. Pit's changes were relatively minor. His down air was made faster. His side special comes out a little bit earlier. Most of Pit's Smash Ultimate moveset is actually intact. There's mostly just some quality of life changes here. Dark Pit, on the other hand, Hand was actually changed more significantly. If you said to yourself, gee, I wish Dark Pit was actually interesting and had some cool stuff like a shine, HDR has you covered. Dark Pit's down special is basically a fox shine. It actually feels really good. It, I'm not lying. I actually love this change. If you want to see more moves that actually shines, you want to stay tuned though. Dark Pit's aerials were changed to be more faster and aggressive, like forward air being a competent combo tool. Side special hitting at no way angle, allowing it to kill earlier. Arrows were given more mobility, and his recovery tools like up special don't instantly grab ledge as easily, which is one of those HDR universal nerfs. All around Dark Pit feels really solid in HDR, an aggressive rushdown version of the character for sure. Zero Suit Samus mostly maintains the soul of the ultimate version of the character. There are some big changes like down air becoming a bouncing down air that allows ZSS to confirm combos off of. It's super good and it leads into her still an incredible up special. Her Zare was changed a lot and it's kind of funny as 
She doesn't have a tether grab yet. She has a tether zare. I actually have never seen a mod do this before. In fact, in PM, there was a heavy debate on whether they should bring back ZSS's tether grab. And actually, you know what, HDR said, we're gonna bring it back. It's funny how HDR has both versions of the grab. It's definitely going to buff her neutral. ZSS mostly got some quality of life changes, like for example, having a trail effects on more of her moves, and they actually look visually much better. Plenty of Wario's moves were actually completely changed in the most recent update. Back air was changed to a punching attack. This is a huge upgrade over the base version in Ultimate. Down air also allows Wario to bounce off opponents and he can actually do combos out of it. Up throw was completely changed to a brand new animation. Wario can even move while doing back throw similar to Project M Wario. And down smash was sort of spiritually made similar again. Project M down smash. <laughs> I love it. His dash attack also allows him to slide off ledges too. Like many characters in the cast, Snake in HDR is inspired from many aspects of Project M Snake. The sleeping trank has returned in all its glory. And yes, you can use it three times before having to reload it. And that means Snake's classic PM combo returns in HDR being trank, up throw, down B. I used to hate this combo when it was really good in 3.6 of Project M, but that's besides the point. Also, down special was changed to be more similar to the P plus version of the move. As you can see, his down B a little bit better visually. The three hit knife attack returns, although its animation was changed. Down smash is actually more similar to the ultimate version of the move. However, it got some major buffs to its range. Snake can also move while in grab, which is again a classic Project M reference. And oh yeah, the most important buff, this honestly makes Snake broken, and I hope they remove this. Snake can move in the box. Again, another Project M thing. I hope you guys know I'm kidding. I love this. Ike was also blessed with his classic Project M tech, his quick draw cancel, which is easily the coolest thing that PM Ike has. It buffs the character a lot. Like its name states, it allows Ike to cancel his quick draw into a jump. That means you can wave dash out of it, which opens up Ike's kit majorly. He can do so many options out of this move. He can jump, Dacus, grab, whatever. It's a very solid tool. Plenty of Ike's moves in HDR also have blue fire trail effects. Ike has his ultimate up air. Pokemon Trainer in this current build is a very similar iteration to the one ultimate. Although I've heard chatter in the HDR Discord that Pokemon Trainer is possibly going to be reworked in the future, we'll just have to see. Some small changes that I noticed. When the Pokemon lose a stock, they don't force you to switch to the next one which is rather nice. Ivysaur's side special has more mobility. I didn't really notice too many changes while doing the research for this video, so Pokemon Trainer is probably gonna get changed further in the future according to some of the devs. Aerial Glide Tossing actually is in HDR, so this heavily buffs characters like Diddy Kong. So that means Diddy Kong can do PM Banana Jank. And no, I'm not kidding. This is actually a very cool thing that they ported over to HDR. It's a very specific Project M tech that was only in that game. Monkey Flip was nerfed pretty hard. They took away Diddy's ability to grab opponents with Monkey Flip, and you can still do an attack out of it. it does kind of remove an option that that side special used to have. Also, Diddy's dash attack lets Diddy slide off of platforms, which is just like in Donkey Kong Country. I actually really love this change. And up till got some animation tweaks. Okay, if you like PM Lucas, I know I'm talking a lot about PM. This is easily one of the most technical characters in Project M returning in HDR. This moveset is completely unique to Lucas, and if you're unaware of these changes, it essentially made him a pseudo spacey. He's a fast follower with a brand new projectile being PK Freeze, which is now his side special, and down special sending behind Lucas, being a tool that can set up combos easily. Although the move is much smaller and his neutral B from Project M is even bad, they ported over his entire moveset in general, and I love this. When you fully charge his neutral B, Lucas will power up his smash attacks. Even his aerials from PM are back. Sonic has received a lot of changes, even more than when I've talked about the character in previous videos. His idle animation was tweaked, his jab animations were actually changed, his up smash was changed to a brand new attack, down smash was changed to the Project M version, which is similar to Sonic Battle, Sonic Battle's inspired breakdancing attack. His nair was changed to a single hit version of this move. His forward air was also changed to another inspiration from PM. This is the iconic axe kick that I love. It's a very solid tool. It can even meteor smash as it's visually a huge step above the original. He also has a brand new side special that is unique to HDR as it's a solid recovery tool. And Sonic will do these very iconic animations out of neutral B, again, just like PM. 
Down air is actually really fast in this game, and I like that it has almost no end lag, like geez. HDR Sonic is definitely a revamp over the ultimate version of the character, making him less defined by balling up, while giving him some of his more iconic attacks from his past, and sprinkling some new ideas on top of that. While DDD still has the Gordos in this game, Project M's Waddle Dee dashing has actually returned, now being Gordo dashing, which is a very interesting way to translate forward his classic Project M tech. DDD can actually control which angle the Gordos are thrown. DDD's brawl back air has also been brought back, and one of the most annoying aerials. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I actually think that it's cool that this move is back. Down throw got an angle change to improve its combo ability, and DDD got a handful of hitbox changes to his jabs, tilts, and aerials. Neat quality of life changes to Olimar was that they actually have a light that will reflect which Pikmin is first up in the lineup. It's actually a nice quality of life change. Other than that, Olimar mostly got slight hitbox changes and animation trail effects. Lucario's entire PM moveset was ported forward and it's pretty insane because Lucario is one of the most changed PM characters. He essentially is an early version of what would be the 2D fighter in a lot of Smash games. Seriously, I'm not just saying that. Lucario is a very technical character. To try to distill it down, Lucario's aura mechanic is completely different as Lucario now gets new moves when his aura is high enough. He gets super moves. The most iconic one that returns is his Aura Bomb. Although Aura Bomb was slightly tweaked, you now require a full charged Aura Sphere now. You can't just input it willy-nilly. The input is also slightly different as you just have to hold down B while shooting Aura Sphere, where in PM it was just with the A-B button combination. Pretty much everything from P plus Lucario is intact. Up B cancels all of his aerials, smash attacks, and special move changes are all here. So if you like that version of Lucario, you're in luck. Rob's back air swings Rob with more momentum now. It also has a new mechanic where Rob charges the attack and he can deal a stronger version of back air. This version will turn blue. So yeah, Rob has a smash attack in the air, I guess you could say. It's kind of neat. When he inputs the super back air, also you gotta be careful when doing this off stage. Rob's side special's final hit was also nerfed and has less knockback. Up special's intangibility was completely removed and his tilts got hitbox changes. Also with aerial glide tossing returning, this also does buff Rob's gyro throws, which is nice. Toon Link has three jumps, which is kind of hilarious, but also kind of cool at the same time. I'm down for it. Along with having a new up air that is a strong combo aerial for the character, and is there bringing opponents towards Toon Link. Really minor changes, but the devs have stated they plan to change Toon Link further. HDR Wolf is a mix between Ultimate Wolf and PM Wolf. PM lasers return where you can wave land out of them. This unlocks a major portion of Wolf's neutral. It is so iconic in PM. Well, in HDR, you can do it too. This unlocks the ability for Wolf to essentially double laser. Other PM specific tech is also being ported over like side special into up B. If you sweet spot side special, you actually get to use up B immediately. Many moves from ultimate are also still intact. It shares plenty of the same ultimate moves. Villager added some interesting new moves. Like first off, he has a third jab, which in the past he only had two jab inputs. Now he has a third. He has a brand new back air that is a strong multi-hit firework attack. Fair got a huge range buff, although it's still kind of weak. Villager can actually remove his sapling when planting it with his down smash and down tilt, which is a really neat change, I must say. Never seen anything like this. He did get some nerfs to his hitbox sizes, majority of them being reduced, and some of his attacks are all around weaker. However, he did get some more stuff like being able to cancel up special into an attack. His grabs have more range. His wood can be instantly put in Villager's hand when he chops down a tree. So those things are actually rather neat. Mega Man feels really good in HDR. I'm not just saying that. As I mentioned earlier, characters can aerial glide toss, which is a huge thing. And since that tech is actually in HDR, it pretty much buffs any character that has access to an item. So Mega Man is under that umbrella. Mega Man can aerial glide toss with his metal blades. This is going to insanely buff his utility with this tool. Wave dashing allows you to grab metal blades. Dash attack was changed into a new shoulder bash, and I actually really love this change. It's a nice animation. His moves have less end lag, like for example, down air more specifically, and its meteor is much easier to hit. And all around, I really like the changes that Mega Man has gotten so far. 
I've heard some devs say he's going to change further. I'd love to see these changes. Mega Man's looking good so far. Wii Fit Trainer's changes are relatively minor. Her side special's timing was tweaked, so the ball comes out a little bit quicker. Down special activates faster, although you can't really spam this move. Her up special doesn't go as high as it previously did, and, but her aerials in this game feel more fast paced, and I personally think this is going to benefit the character in general, especially with Wii Fit Trainer's combo game. Many of her moves have cleaned up hitboxes. Other than that, she is mostly the same from the ultimate iteration of the character. Rosalina has a lot of changes. Play of her moves were tweaked to give them more utility, and I'm pretty sure her recovery was also buffed which is kind of rare in HDR to do, but they made her jumps go higher and her up B doesn't go as high, but it, they actually allowed her to have more utility on where it goes, so it has more mobility, make it actually a stronger recovery tool in my opinion. Her biggest buff by far was to her down special, being a teleport now. This allows Rosalina and Luma to literally trade spots. The move needs a long period of time to charge, so you can't necessarily spam this endlessly. Don't worry, I tried. But it's definitely a very interesting tool because it makes her feel more like a puppet style character. It feels like a natural progression for Rosalina. Rosalina actually feels really good. I don't really have any complaints. Rosalina mains are probably gonna be eaten right now because her smash attacks, her aerials all felt decent. It seems like her grabs were buffed to give her more combo utility. Like for example, her up throw and down throw. A lot of people are speculating that she's also a top tier character. So if you're a fan of Rosalina in the past, apparently she's really good now. <laughs> Some people might say she's too busted, but maybe we'll have that conversation another day. <laughs> HDR tier list maybe? Uh, leave a comment down below for that. Little Mac in general is actually much safer in HDR. He still has a bad recovery and is incredible on stage, but because HDR in general is toning down a lot of characters' recoveries, Little Mac feels more normalized. He still has strong KO power, but they took away his super armor to try to make him more of a viable character, and less of a character that had highs and lows that were really distinct. His dash speed was increased as well, so they did try to tone him down while giving him more normalized tools and buffing his aerials and recovery across the board. A lot of people say Little Mac is actually pretty good in this game. His aerials were actually given insane amounts of utility buffs as they actually are solid tools. Down air being able to actually do this off stage, his neutral B charge can actually be held and it can kill really early. These are great changes. His moveset in general has a lot more range, which is honestly kind of insane. This was a huge flaw of Little Mac in the past. The fact that most of the characters got nerfed recoveries in HDR actually benefits Mac because his recovery is slightly better while a lot of other characters had their recoveries toned down. He's essentially a more normalized version of Little Mac in Smash Ultimate. I don't think he's a low tier in this current version of the character. They took away a lot of his best tools like his super armor, sure but they did give him plenty of buffs to try to make him a more normal character. Plenty of Greninja's attacks were actually increased in range and speed. A lot of them have less end lag. Shadow Sneak comes out faster. His neutral B doesn't need to be charged as long, but it's slightly weaker. I also really like that Greninja's movement on stage feels really buttery smooth. With wave dashing and dash dancing especially, Greninja actually I think has some mobility buffs here. Palutena got a lot of changes. First off, she pretty much has a new meter mechanic called Color Board. This is represented on the bottom of her HUD. If you notice Palutena's staff, her staff will glow different colors during different moves. If you hit an opponent with a move, it will have a representing color and it will fill up down below, which is important if you want to gain full meter, you'll get access to brand new special moves, being red, blue, green, and then if you mix those colors together, you'll get even more special moves, being purple, orange, and yellow. Here are the corresponding special moves for each. Some of them are combo setups, while some are KO tools. The previous special move that was really OP in the past now is one of these color board moves. Without any meter, her neutral B is actually a shine and her counter basically works without being activated. So yeah, these are some interesting changes. Other ones could be that she can jump out of her up special while on stage. Plenty of her moves have been buffed like up smash's range and KO power. Pac-Man mainly got quality of life changes. His neutral B goes through each fruit faster so you can use the tool quicker. Up smash deals more knockback. Back air also has more knockback growth. His ultimate moveset is mostly left intact 
just slightly faster paced. Robin was majorly buffed. Many people predict that Robin is actually a top tier character now, considering the level of changes he was given. In fact, I actually really like the character now. First off, his overall run speed was buffed significantly in the air and on the ground. He's just much faster in this game. Robin's up special can be canceled with a jump which heavily buffs this move's utility in general. I'm gonna be saying buffs a lot for Robin, okay? That means he can input a jump up special and then jump again and do aerials out of it, which is actually a crazy mix-up tool as it allows Robin to have a Game & Watch-esque up special. Robin can also input his regular up special too, so it doesn't really nerf his recovery in any way. And also, Robin has a meter at the bottom that will reflect the amount of charge each move in his moveset has. And they will deplete and then the item will drop again and then it will appear again once the meter refills. He also has a peach float. Yes, Robin has a float. <laughs> While using his wind tone more specifically, which is a very big buff. The level of end lag on his moves across the board was decreased significantly. Like seriously, Robin is so much faster in this game. I wouldn't even call him slow anymore. As someone who used to play Robin as a secondary in Smash 4, me. He actually feels really good in HDR. He's assumed to be a top tier character currently, but we'll have to see. Shulk is much faster in HDR. In fact, wave dash lengths actually change depending on which Minato is in use. He's actively getting changed right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of his moves get changed, but he's mostly the same from the Ultimate version currently. Bowser Jr. can jump out of his side special, and this is a spiritual recreation of Ike's quick draw mechanic now sort of being on Bowser Jr.'s moveset. You can also do air dodge out of us special, and Bowser Jr.'s projectiles were buffed in power along with him being able to grab Mecha Koopas with his wave dash. Down throw was changed into a combo tech chasing tool, and his moveset in general feels stronger than the base version of Bowser Jr., so I'm glad he's finally getting some buffs in some way. Okay, I never thought I was ever going to really like this character, but what can I say? My god, Duck Hunt in this mod is amazing. He feels so good. He's very fluid and fast paced now, which I don't think I would ever say that, ever, in a sentence. Now, does he feel broken? I don't think so, but his big flaw in his past was having low speed and high startup and end lag on his moves, making his playstyle rather committal. The HDR team made him a faster paced zoner, and I love it. It feels really good. The speed difference is what really makes him feel completely different from the past. In fact, many people speculated that Duck Hunt is possibly a top tier character now, and I actually really like him in this game. In control when the gunman shoots with a down B press, his projectiles and aerials got major hitbox buffs, making them easier to hit, especially with the sweet spots. Also, his down air, just, 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 uh, God, these down airs and the HDR, just look at it. Forward Smash got some major KO buffs, and it can also KO so early. Duck Hunt's amazing. Moving on. Ryu was given quite a lot of changes. He has a brand new meter mechanic pulled from Street Fighter. Surprise, surprise. I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely suck at 2D fighter style characters. I just, not nah, honest content. I made mean, that PM. They still have a very deep learning curve, but trust me, if you love these characters, especially the way they're represented in Street Fighter, you're going to like them a lot more as they're pulling from plenty of inspirations from those games. And this goes to Ken as well. There are a lot of changes to Ryu and Ken in general. I'll try to condense these down the best that I can. Ryu has a air dash in the air by air dodging. Yes, this is pretty insane. He can now cancel his moves on hit in his moveset similar to how you could in Street Fighter. A couple of other characters have this as well. He has countless moves like his heavy jab, light F tilt, heavy F tilt, light up tilt, you get the point. He has more moves in his kit in general. You can keep going down the list, he just has so many moves. Plenty of his sweet spots and sour spots were changed heavily. His entire moveset is just pulling more from Street Fighter. And yes, he does have super moves on top of all of this. Him and Ken are some of the most changed characters in all of HDR. So if you wish that Ryu and Ken were more accurate to their source material, HDR has you covered because they essentially did that. Ken's aerial fireball can be shot diagonally. His three hit jab was changed. His side special is invulnerable against projectiles on the first and last hit. And his aerial momentum was tweaked. 
Down special is now a command dash and it slides off ledges. Surprise, surprise. Back air was also changed to a new attack. Up smash's animations was changed along with up air. And Ken can also cancel his attacks on hit similar to Ryu. And yes, he has super moves too on top of all of this. I know I condensed their entire moveset. This just goes to show the amount of love that was put into Ryu and Ken in HDR. You can tell the devs really show a lot of respect to these characters. There's a little bit of a running joke in the community about just leaving Cloud exactly the same the way he is and he'd still be good, and that kind of is the case here. I've stated in the past that Cloud's movement is perfect, and this kind of engine just makes it even better. His stats and physics and just overall moveset in general already really strong, so you don't really need to change it that much. His already good movement is made even better with wave dashing and dash dancing. He honestly feels like a character that should have just done this in the past. And he did get very slight hitbox tweaks, but Nothing really that major. He's actually a very healthy character in HDR's meta. A lot of people see it as, hey, why fix something that isn't broken? Corrin has a brand new down air that doesn't stall and fall, and it's a combo tool. Plenty of Corrin's attacks have more range buffs like down tilt, having better sweet spot hitboxes. Jab got sped up, and you can act out of Corrin's pin with an air dodge. And this opens up the combo utility for this move a lot more. You can up special out of air dodge for some reason. <laughs> Pretty neat. His flip jump animation was tweaked slightly and a lot of his throws and tilts have been improved as far as their combo capabilities. Oh, and uh, HDR devs, you might want to add a taunt hitbox on this. This would be kind of cool. I think that'd be really funny. According to some of the write-ups on Bayonetta, the devs aim to give the character more frame gaps in her cancels and give her more precise positioning, giving her more options while toning down some of the other aspects of her moveset. She was basically sprinkled a lot of moveset tweaks, small hitbox changes to her whole moveset, a lot of minor changes here. Up special and aerial side special getting their hitboxes reworked, jab 3 was made into a gentleman, up air's hitbox size is a lot bigger, and she has new macro inputs when inputting after after a burner kick. And then pressing grab or attack will function as a brand new move. Her down taunt also changed to one of her iconic windscreen animations. There's a really long document in HDR's Discord just discussing the changes that Bayonetta has received. She's actually one of those characters where you can tell that the devs put a lot of love into this character and really paid attention on how to balance Bayonetta. So I recommend checking that out if you're a Bayo main and you want to see the more nitty gritty stuff. Inkling got plenty of hitbox changes like aerials and hilts all being tweaked and repositioned. It feels like Inkling's combo game is easier to do. Roller doesn't bury until side B's later frames. Landing with side special is easier because it has less end lag. Splatter shot has a hitbox at the end of the animation that can launch opponents, which is cool. Splatter bomb always sends forward now, and overall Inkling got a lot of quality of life changes. Ridley got some brand new moves, like a new aerial down special that allows you to do an angled skewer that is the strongest when sweet spotted. They also changed Ridley's down air to be a combo tool, being another brand new attack, along with neutral B being changed to a single, much larger fireball attack. Despite it looking like a nerf, it's actually a much better tool than the previous version. It's much faster in neutral and it's harder to punish. Also receiving some smoothed out animations and moves being tweaked like for example back air and F tilt. The most important buff being to Ridley's down taunt as it makes Ridley stand even taller. How menacing. Simon is mostly representing the ultimate iteration of the character, and his changes aren't that extensive as of right now, but a couple changes that he got were to up tilt's hitboxes allowing it to combo better and Nair's hitboxes being tweaked up a bit to make the move more consistent. Simon's design philosophy was to keep the character the same while giving him quality of life changes. Richter can actually grab his down special bottle and use it as an item. The input is by holding down special and then pressing shield and you will have the bottle in Richter's hand. Richter's sweet spotted up air will actually meteor smash and it will bring the opponent downward and that means you can combo off of it. King K. Rool got a lot of silly changes, I love them. Down special is a shine. K. Rool has a shine. Crazy. This is instantly a huge buff over the counter that it was before. K. Rool can also slow down his ults to make them stronger. It's kind of funny. I've never seen a mechanic like this in Smash. His jab tilts are overall feel pretty strong and other small changes, like his back air no longer having a boxing glove on his hand. 
and down throw no longer buries opponents in the ground. They also did kind of buff and nerf neutral B. It no longer sucks in opponents and shoots out a cannon at the same time, so if you press neutral B, you will get the cannon. However, you'll have to hit A or shield to activate the other version of the move that sucks the opponents in. You can't just do both of them at the same time anymore. They also made tweaks to K Rule's belly armor mechanic, mostly with how it deals with damage, taking away a lot of the armor on his moves, and Down Taunt can do this. Isabel was given a brand new combo tool, that being her forward air, and her pocket now has a hitbox on the move, which is rather nice as the move still does what it did in Smash Ultimate with pocketing projectiles, although now it has more utility. Balloon Trip has a fuel mechanic that is gonna nerf its recovery, and if you spam the move off stage, you'll see what happens. Down Special no longer automatically activates. It will explode as soon as it touches the opponent. The move is also remote activated by Isabel. Bear is a much stronger attack, although it has less range, and Fishing Rod Up and Down Throw have a lot less end lag. Also, Isabel can wall jump in HDR. Incineroar has darkness effects on a lot of his moves, you know, because he's a dark type. Incineroar is a bit faster than the Ultimate version, and you can choose not to do the second hit of up special, which is a huge buff right there. You can also slip off ledges with neutral B. They buffed pretty much his whole throw game, giving him a brand new revenge version of his throws. Essentially, if revenge is activated, Incineroar gets brand new, stronger throws. Really excellent change. Incineroar feels like a healthy version of the character in HDR. These are some great buffs. They made Plant into a stance character. Yes, I did not stutter, a stance character. Meaning that Piranha Plant has access to different movesets depending on the version of the character. Kind of like Project M's fire and ice modes for Samus. Using Plant's taunts will actually activate different moves. Being normal, which also is the fire moves, and then spiky, which is also the prickly moves, and poison moves or putrid. Some of Plant's previous moves are still a part of these movesets, and there's some new attacks as well. Poison moveset is obviously, like its name states, uses poison moves. Fire Plant is most closely related to the ultimate version of Plant while having a brand new side special attack and down smash. The prickly moves are definitely slower, however they're much stronger than the base versions and Plant's kit. Joker's gun has more range and they cleaned up the hitbox positioning on all of his tilts, aerials, and smash attacks. With slight tweaks to Arsene, he can cancel his flight with an aerial, however this will consume his double jump. And also up special's travel angle has been increased too. Joker all around feels like a more aggressive character in this engine with all the wave dashing and dash dancing buffs. For hero, down air now has a sour and sweet spot on the early hit of Hero's Blade. A lot of Hero's MP moves have less end lag, however they use more MP, so they're a little bit more risky. A lot of his magic moves got quality of life changes, like being able to B-reverse his command menu, and it has more air speed. Many of Hero's hitboxes were also tweaked slightly, like for example his aerials, and Hero's mostly received slight animation and quality of life changes. Banjo was changed quite a lot, having new animations on a lot of Banjo's attacks up tilt now looking a lot better visually and it's a strong combo tool. Up Smash's animation was changed to what up tilt kind of was previously and Ariel's side special has a new animation. He also has a Nair with plenty more range. Banjo has less end lag on a majority of his moves and they're less risky, like for example down air being able to bounce off opponents like many other down airs in HDR. Although his down throw no longer buries opponents into the ground, grabbing grenade is actually easier to do as the, again, the introduction to wave dashing actually makes it easier to grab this grenade. Banjo only has one feather at a time, which definitely is a nerf, although the feather will recharge after a period of time, which to be honest, I actually think is not a bad change. As an ultimate, he was permanently limited to a certain amount of feathers per stock. Doesn't really have that problem, it can recharge now. Similar to Ken and Ryu, Terry also has a cancel system that was introduced in HDR. Terry is closer to his King of Fighter source material. Plenty of his moves got angle changes, knockback changes, more hitboxes being reshaped and resized. There's actually quite a lot of changes to Terry in general, so... He's looking good actually in this meta though. Byleth is moving a lot faster in HDR, his wave dash and dash dance are rather good, and Byleth has an alternate forward smash he can use while holding neutral B, 
while charging the attack. The move will send the opponent near Byleth if he hits with the sweet spot. His jab hitboxes have been tweaked to cover more of his arm and shoulder. His throws were also changed to smooth out their animations. Using side special in the air will give Byleth more recovery utility. A lot of HDR players have stated that Byleth is a really solid character in HDR. Min Min has been given an overall frame data buffs across the board. Her nair is now a sex kick, and her back air is a brand new attack being its own unique move along with forward air. I love these animations, they're just peak. I love these changes. Down air no longer is a dive kick, down tilt animation has been tweaked, changing it to a two-handed beam attack with both arms. The attack also deals more damage, and if Power Dragon is active, the attack becomes much larger and stronger. Also, throwing an opponent now applies the Power Dragon buff to the right dragon arm as well, increasing its damage by 1.15. In the most recent update especially, Min Min has gotten a lot of changes, and I think they're for the better. Steve didn't receive that many changes, but he received a mix of buffs and nerfs. Steve can spawn a crafting table by inputting shield during the first 5 frames of neutral special, and Steve can no longer spawn the table if one currently exists on stage, so they're adding more risk to this move. Breaking the table now has a cooldown period of 242 frames before it's able to be spawned again. They added Soul Fire, which is a variant of Down Tilt. If you hold down the move, that's where you'll get this version. Up Tilt no longer vacuums and its hitbox size was decreased, and his speed for mining is actually much slower in HDR. The health of his blocks were definitely handed some nerfs. Forward Air Startup nerfed. Overall, they definitely nerfed Steve pretty hard in HDR. Many people speculate Steve is actually a low tier now. Some people predict that Steve actually could be the worst character in HDR. Another nerf that hit him hard was the changes to HDR's DI and hit stun definitely made it harder for Steve to combo. Along with it being easier to move around with him with wave dashing and dash dancing definitely humbled the character. Characters can just generally escape from his setups a lot easier. Sephiroth's multi-hit jab was changed to a strong single hit attack. Plenty of Sephiroth's attacks, their animations were also changed to make it look better visually, some of my favorites being his up smash. Blade Dash was reworked into a grounded version of the move, and you can now control the distance the move goes. And it can be angled in many different directions, which is actually a crazy change to its utility. It's a very technical tool now as you can fake out approaches with it. It's definitely a major change compared to the ultimate version of the move. Side B's explosion hitboxes changed to improve its combo capabilities. Down throw was also changed, and Sephiroth's initial dash speed was slightly increased and a lot of his moves in general feel a lot snappier, gaining slight startup buffs here and there. Pyro and Mithra didn't really get changed that much. Most of their changes are relatively minor and just small hitbox reworks. There's sour spots and sweet spot changes on Pyra's aerials, and there's less startup on down special. They made Mithra's down smash deal two hits and also tweaking Mithra's dash attack and tilts as they were given angle adjustments. Again, very minor changes. They mostly kept this character the same. It's kind of like Cloud, where they thought why break something that isn't broken. Many people speculate they're actually just as good in HDR as they were in Ultimate. Kazuya got a mix of buffs and nerfs, got a slightly faster dash and run speed, hitbox changes to jab 1 and 2, crouch jab can jab lock, back throw knocks opponents down, Nair's sweet spot hitboxes were changed, and wind god fist is actionable faster. Plenty of Kazuya's attacks have less startup and duration changes. His main moveset was mostly optimized with various small changes. I mentioned earlier that Steve was nerfed by all the characters moving faster, and the hit stun changes in HDR ironically kind of affected Kazuya. The hit stun changes made it easier to escape out of Kazuya's combos. People have stated in more recent updates that Kazuya has been given plenty of buffs to try to balance this out. People are saying that Kazuya right now is still a solid character, just a little bit more honest. Honest content too. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. Really long video. <laughs> Sora's Blazago was completely changed, now being a completely different version of the move. It is now inspired from Kingdom Hearts 3. It's a solid combo tool and also a nice quality of life change. Sora can now double jump cancel all of his aerials. In the past, he could only double jump cancel two of them, but this is actually a great change. Side B is more aimable and you have more control over where you move with it. Neutral air was also changed. Down air being a very solid combo tool now in Sora's kit. Up throw and down throw are now Sora's combo throws. 
moves. Plenty of his moves like down smash and back air just feel more fluid in this game. In general, Sora's floaty mobility definitely matches pretty well with HDR's engine. Me Brawler's run speed was increased and they gave him hitbox changes pretty much to his entire moveset. Plenty of his moves have more coverage now in general, Helicopter Kick has better hitbox sizes, and they also gave him a more consistent feint jump, giving the flip more control with its landing friction decreased slightly. Sword Fighter, Soaring Zypher is now a small tornado that will rise in the air. Wario Wave was given a visual overhaul. Hero Spin retains its momentum into the charge, and they remove the ability to move while charging and spinning the multi-hits. Blade Counter has no intangibility during the counter animation, and Shock Spell was given a visual overhaul. The Gunner got various hitbox repositionings, and Down Air also has plenty more hitboxes on the early and late hit while having less knockback growth. Bombs Away Charging has increased its launch angle by 20 degrees. Flame Pillar has a higher lifetime. Pulse Missile no longer cancels before firing a missile, but it travels much further and it does more damage. Absorbing Vortex got slightly changed as now it's a two-part move that draws opponents in when held. The Me Fighters just got a lot of slight tweaks to their moves in general. Thank you guys for watching. Watching. Seriously, thank you for the 20,000 subscribers. I would not be here without you guys. Seriously, hopefully you guys are doing well over the holidays. If you guys want to support the channel in any way and get videos early, get access to the Honest Content Discord, there is a link down below for that. Again, thank you so much for the support. You guys are awesome. Like Seriously, thank you. If you guys want to stream my most recent album, Zach Honest, Sapphire, link down below. Thank you so much.